In the previous slides, we were looking at changes in one specific parameter or cell, and we were looking how the alternatives were impacted by changes in that parameter. And we looked at them one at a time, and we saw the values in between. And that might be useful if I was really focusing on one variable. But often I want to say, where should I invest time to get a more accurate estimate? And I'd like to be able to see all the changes on one common scale to see maybe I need to put my energies in getting a better estimate for this particular parameter. And there are two ways this information can be displayed. One way is called a tornado graph, and the way a tornado graph is created. It simply takes the low value and the high value specified for the variable. It then calculates the expected value for those two extremes. It then creates a bar whose length is equal to the change in the expected value. It then sorts order the bars from largest to smallest, which is why it then looks like a tornado. The nice thing about a tornado graph when we look at it is it's there's really no practical limit to how many bars you can put on one chart. The one thing that a tornado graph does not show you, it does not show you anything about a change in which what is the optimal decision. It just simply gives you the expected value for the two extremes. In contrast, a spider graph is really an extension of the individual graphs we looked at before, but here it's more closely linked to the sensitivity graph, which just shows the optimum expected value. But a spider graph takes all those variables, we considered all four of them, and puts them on one chart, and we can compare them in multiple ways. We can look at how steep the graphs are, and we can also look at the absolute range on the expected value. In this case, the process for creating a spider graph is similar to the process for the individual sensitivity analysis. It looks at every number in between the two extremes that you've specified, the 10 numbers you've specified. It determines the expected value, and then graphs it on a common scale, and we'll, when we look at the graph, we'll We'll explore what those common scales mean. In this tornado graph, we have four bars. The first bar, the bar on top, is reflects the change in the probability of a low take rate. And remember, we ranged it from 0.2 to 0.6. And it simply specifies the two n values. And the two n values are, when you look at the table, it drops to $4.54 million, and it can go as high as $8.16 million. Those are a 28 to 29% change from the original value. The original value was at 6.3. $2 million. It's clear that the range we specified on the with regard to the probability, that range has the highest impact on the range of the expected value. It's more than double the impact when we looked at the range of high in investment fixed cost. That 7% change in the high investment fixed cost, that bar is wider than when we explored a 10% change in the variable cost associated with the high investment. And the last one is the variable cost associated with the low investment. And you can see from this, you don't. it has minimal impact being off. Remember, in this case, case, we allowed for the possibility that the low investment could drop by 5%. Going from 0% to 5%, that range has very little impact on the expected value. And if you could look very carefully, you would see that this bar is only to the left of 6.32 on the expected value. The x-axis is the expected value. The y-axis are the individual variables that we changed. Now, when we look at the table, that just re reports those same things here. In this case, the graph actually gives a better insight to what's going on than by looking at the table, but you can see from the table that with regard to the probability of a low take rate, it goes from 4.54 million to 8.16 million, which is more than three and a half million dollar difference. With regard to the high investment fixed cost, when we vary that, it goes from 5.86 to 7.23. That's a range of about 1.5 four million dollars. When we do the high investment variable cost, it ranges from 5.86 to 6.908. And notice for two and three, the minimum is 5.86 in both cases. That's not a coincidence. The reason why the minimum is the same is that when the fixed cost for the high investment or the variable cost for the high investment increases too much, we eventually switch to the alternative solution, which is low investment, and the expected value for the low investment is 5.86. And the low investment variable cost, notice that the minimum, if there's no change, it stays at 6.32, then we would stick with the high investment decision. However, if it drops by 5%, the maximum expected value is now 6.427, which is about 1.7% higher than before. One aspect of the table is not obvious and requires some explanation, and that relates to the input values listed for the min and maximum. Notice for the probability of a low take rate, the input values are 0.6, 
and 0.2. Those are the actual ranges on that probability. As you go from 0.6 to 0.2, at every point, the expected value is changing. Notice at the other extreme, let's look at rank number four, that refers to the low investment variable cost. The low investment variable cost is 27. It could go down by 5%, which would bring it down to 25.65. But notice it doesn't say an input value of 27 on that row. And the reason is, is that from 27, as it decreases to 26, the expected value in no way changes. It stays at 6.32. So it's 6.32 up to and including the point 25.95. So in this case, it's specifying the input value that keeps the same expected value, and only after that, in that range, are things change. So that means between 25.95 and 25.65 on the variable cost for the low investment, the expected value will constantly be changing. Above 25.95 until 27, there's no impact on the expected value. The same logic can be used to explain what's happening in row two. For the high fixed cost, the investment was $13 million. When we decrease it by 7%, that drops to $12.09 million. If we were to increase it by 7%, that would go to $13.91 million. What this says is that once it goes above $13.51 million, the expected value now is 5.86, and it never changes as we go any higher than that. It's not at all obvious um, and not easy to see. This is a spider graph. Notice on some of the graphs, there are bends in the line consistent with what we saw when we did a sensitivity analysis when the decision changes. So the spider graph captures to some extent that the decision is changing, but it puts all these ranges on one graph, and it would it's hard enough to read when you have four of these variables, and it would be extremely difficult to read if you had more. In contrast, in a tornado diagram, they would just be sort ordered, and it's pretty much easier to see. Now, what do I see when I look at this particular graph? The x-axis is a change in the input variable. The y-axis, in this case, is a change in the expected value. Which variable per percent change in its input has the most impact on the expected value. Well, the line that has the steepest slope is the red line, which is the high fixed investment cost. So the slope is steep. For every 1% change in that variable, it has a higher impact on the expected value. Something that has a relatively smaller slope is the probability of a 30% take rate. That slope is not as steep, but notice the range of impact on the expected value is the widest. We ranged that probability from 0.2 to 0.6, which was a range of decrease of 50% to an increase of 50%. So it's not surprising that on the x-axis it has the widest range, but it also has the widest range on the y-axis. Notice the low investment variable cost, which is a little hard to see, only has a line to the left of 0%, because remember we only considered reducing that by 5%. That's the entire range we considered. And over most of that range, it had no impact, so you have a yellow line that goes parallel to the x-axis and only slightly increases as we get to the minus 5%. And the high investment variable cost, the slope is much more significant and the range on the expected value is also more significant. There's one last chart to present, and that involves a two-way sensitivity analysis. In the top row, it says analysis type. The default is one-way sensitivity analysis. You can also ask for two-way sensitivity analysis, in which case it's going to ask you for what two variables do you want to change in pair. And so you just select two-way sensitivity. Once you've specified two-way sensitivity analysis, a menu will crop up listing all the variables you're considering to, to change or place over a range, and it asks you to pick which two variables do you want to pair, and it also asks you to specify which one is going to be graphed on the x-axis and which one's going to be graphed on the y-axis. In this case, we're selecting C4 and C5, namely the high investment variable costs and the high investment fixed costs. In this example, the high investment variable cost was specified as $14 per unit, and when we range it, we range it by plus or minus 10%. 
which is 15.4 down to 12.6 dollars. That's the x-axis. The y-axis is the high fixed cost, and that base value is 13 million dollars, and it can go as low as between 12.2 and 12.0, and as high as approximately 13.9 in the ranges that we specified. This picture, the way it's read, is that if you see a blue diamond, that means the optimum solution in that particular environment is the high investment cost. Wherever you see a red triangle, the optimum solution is a low investment. Notice in the bottom four rows, all the values are blue. Namely, as long as the fixed cost investment is less than $12.8 million, irrespective of what the variable cost is within the range we considered, the optimum solution will be to stick with the high investment decision. When the high investment decision be approaches $13 million, then changes in the high investment variable cost might change the optimum solution and the optimum solution might switch to the low investment strategy. Notice when we're at the upper end of the spectrum when it's close to 14 million dollars over the range that we considered for the variable cost most of the time the low investment strategy would be better as in, you can see in the top row. What that says is that another way to look at this is whenever the high investment variable cost is $13 or less and you look up the y-axis you notice they're all blue. So in that range when the variable cost drops that low, the optimal strategy will always be to go with the high investment no matter how much the investment cost is. As that variable cost increases and you go up the y-axis, you notice you end up with more and more red triangles saying that at those points, the impact of the two variables begin to intermingle and as a result, the, ch the decision changes.